Let's review a few TCP retransmission scenarios with the simplified sender behavior we just discussed. The first scenario we will consider is the lost act scenario. Let's assume we are sending a segment with sequence number 92 and 8 bytes of data from host A to host B. The act for that segment from host B to A should contain the act for byte 100, indicating the next expected byte sequence number. If that act does not reach host A and is lost, host A will retransmit the segment on the event of timeout. The segment will have the same sequence number 92, and this time, hopefully, the sender will receive the ACK. The second scenario is the event of late receipt of a cumulative ACK. Let's assume the sender sends two segments, one with sequence number 92 and 8 bytes of data, and the following segment with sequence number 120 bytes of data. The corresponding cumulative acts are sent from the receiver side on the receipt. But the act 100 does not reach the sender before the timeout. And host A sends it again. At the receiver, because host B has already received all bytes up to 120, it will act 120. And that would be the cumulative act to host A. In the third scenario, the sender sends two segments, one with sequence number 92 and 8 bytes of data, and the following segment with sequence number 120 bytes of data. The ACK for 100 is lost, but since the cumulative ACK following acknowledges up to the white 120, host A can infer the receipt of both segments and continue with sending the data after the cumulative act. After reviewing simple retransmission scenarios and gaining an understanding of byte stream cumulative act, let's take a look at how TCP receiver decides how to generate the act upon receipt of a segment. When an in-order segment with the expected sequence number arrives at the receiver, all the data up to the expected sequence number are already acknowledged. In this situation, the receiver delays sending the ACK. In order to wait for the next segment to be able to send cumulative ACK for all of the received bytes. If the wait time finishes and no additional segment arrives, the same delayed ACK will be sent. While waiting with the delayed ACK, after the arrival of the in-order segments, if the receiver receives another in-order segment with expected sequence number, it will immediately send single cumulative ACK, which acknowledges both of the received in-order segments. On the arrival of out-of-order segments with higher than expected sequence number, the receiver immediately sends the duplicate ACK for the last in-order segment, indicating the expected byte. Remember, what TCP does with the out-of-order segment is upon the decision of the implementer. On the arrival of segment that partially or completely fills the gap previously observed, if the new segment fills the lower part of the gap ensuring in-order expected by change, the receiver sends immediate ACK, acknowledging all the in-order data received. 